Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. If there's anything you need to know about bass fishing, it's that bass love grass. There has probably been more tournaments won fishing grass than just about any other type of cover out there. It seems that if there is even just a little bit of grass in the lake near you, it's going to hold bass. And the lakes that have a lot of grass always seem to have the best populations of bass. But what happens when you get to a lake reservoir or pond and it just seems as if there's nothing but grass how do you go about fishing the grass how do you dissect grass to find bass that are located in it and once you find them how do you go about getting them out does grass get too thick to hold bass what kind of grass is this and how many types of grass hold bass well the good news is you're in luck because today is all about learning how to dominate when grass fishing Stay tuned, it's going to be a good one. So let's first break down the two categories of grass that you have on any given body of water. You have emergent grass, which is grass that actually grows above the water that you can actually see with your own eyes. And then you have submergent grass. This is grass that grows below the water. And the submergent grass is the grass we're going to talk about today. We'll leave emergent grass for part two of this grass fishing master class. So let's get into submergent grass. There are four main types of submergent vegetation that bass absolutely love. Milfoil, coontail, hydrilla, and eelgrass. While there are a lot more types of submergent grasses, these four seem to be the most widespread and popular among bass fishermen. Milfoil, coontail, and hydrilla all grow similarly, while eelgrass is a very different plant all on its own. Let's first talk about milfoil, coontail, and hydrilla, and we will save eelgrass for the very end of the video. Before we talk about seven high percentage areas to find big bass and grass, let's first make sure you know exactly what each of these species of grass look like. That way you don't tell your buddies that you're fishing milfoil when you're actually fishing coontail. The first type of grass is water milfoil. There is actually both invasive and native species of milfoil grass found in North America. The milfoil you find in most lakes and reservoirs is called Eurasian milfoil and it is an absolute bass magnet. In general, milfoil has soft stems with whorls of leaves going up the plant. Each whorl has four leaves with 12 to 21 pairs of leaflets on each leaf. Milfoil typically grows from about 3 foot of water to about 10 feet of water. However, in some parts of the country, like Minnesota, milfoil can grow upwards of 14 and 15 feet deep depending on where you're located as well as water clarity. Like many other types of submergent vegetation, as milfoil grows throughout the summer and the leaves begin to broaden, they will come all the way up to the surface of the lake. Sometimes they will even lay over on the surface and create mats and canopies of vegetation. And we all know that bass love mats. Milfoil is the same type of grass that Seth Fighter was targeting on Lake Champlain in New York when he nearly won $100,000 on the Bassmaster Elite Series a few years ago. Coontail. Coontail is often confused with milfoil, but unlike milfoil, coontail is actually a native species to North America. Although the leaves are similar in their color and softness, coontail is shaped more like a Christmas tree with the end of the plant tapering just like a raccoon's tail, hence the name. Coontail also doesn't have multiple leaves around the stem like milfoil. However, just like milfoil, Bass can be found relating to coontail throughout the entire year and in very similar ways that they relate to milfoil. Just like milfoil, coontail can actually mat up at certain times of the year and create canopies and caves for bass to hide in and around. I have actually heard it said that coontail mats are some of the easiest mats to get a bait in and out of, which makes it a prime target for bass fishermen. A lot of times, milfoil, coontail, and hydrilla will all mix together in some areas. This is often some of the best bass fishing areas you will find. However, we will get into that a little bit later in the video. Hydrilla. Hydrilla is probably the king daddy of submergent vegetation. It is typically found in the south and southeastern part of the United States, and it is definitely an invasive species. 
Hydrilla looks a lot different than both milfoil and coontail. Hydrilla has single leaves wrapped around a vibrant green stem. Hydrilla also seems to be able to grow deeper than any other plant species, sometimes up to 20 feet deep. Although hydrilla may look different than milfoil and coontail, it is just the same, an absolute bass magnet. Bass can be found relating to hydrilla, whether it is in 5 feet of water or 20 feet of water throughout the entire year. Like milfoil and coontail, hydrilla will grow tall and mat over. Again, this will create caves, holes, and canopies for bass to get in and around. So let's talk a little bit about how bass use grass throughout the year. During the spring, when grass is starting to grow, you will find milfoil, hydrilla, and coontail in three or four foot of water in small bays where bass are going to spawn. Because the grass is typically sparse in the spring, using moving lures like chatterbaits and lipless crankbaits is a great way to cover these bays and catch the bass that are staging in these grass areas ready to go up and spawn. As the water warms and the bass begin to spawn, bass will spawn around clumps of grass, but they will not be found under the grass because the bass need light to fertilize their eggs. Typically you will find spawning bass relating to the edge of grass in protected areas during the spawn. After the bass spawn, some fish will remain shallow throughout the year and seek shallow grass mats of cover. However, one of the best ways to catch them during the summer is finding areas where milfoil, hydrilla, and coontail grow very deep and tall. In these areas, you can find giant schools of bass located just inside the outside grass lines. This is a pattern that will hold true all the way to fall. As the summer turns into fall and water temperatures start to cool, a lot of grass is going to start dying. However, not all grass will die and the grass that you find that is still green and still healthy looking is going to have giant schools of bass in them. So now that you know the general migration of bass and grass, the key to finding them and catching them is to find high percentage areas within the grass. Sometimes you can literally find grass flats that stretch for miles and miles. How do you dissect all that grass? And how do you start locating the schools of bass that are in that grass? Let's talk about seven high percentage areas where you can find bass in the grass. The first high percentage grass area and one of the best places to locate bass in the grass is anywhere you have other forms of cover mixing with the grass. For example, if you can find big rocks or boulders that mix with milfoil grass, this is a prime area to flip. These rocks will usually create holes in the grass and attract food like crawfish, which in turn attract bass. Not only do rocks mix with grass attract bass, but wood mixed with grass will do the same thing. Sometimes you will find laydowns or brush piles that are right on the edge of grass lines. Again, this is another high percentage area where bass can be located and caught. Although I'm mainly talking about submergent grass in this video, it's important to note that anywhere you find docks mixed with grass, especially milfoil, can be a dynamite place to catch bass throughout the spring, summer, and fall. The docks will create a hole in the grass under the dock since grass can't grow without sunlight. The bass will position themselves in these holes and in the shade lines. This brings me to my next high percentage grass area, which are holes. Finding holes in the grass is an extremely overlooked pattern to catching a whole lot of bass, pun intended. The reason this goes overlooked is because it is one of the hardest things to find when you are fishing grass, especially when you're talking about submergent grass that you can't see. Finding these grass holes can require a lot of time idling before you find productive holes, but once you find these holes, they can be absolutely stacked with bass. Holes in the grass can also be referred to as bare spots in the grass. These holes basically act as giant dinner plates for bass to feed. It is a place where bass can ambush prey that is passing through the hole. A hole in the grass can also indicate a change in bottom composition which is typically why the hole is created in the first place. Sometimes you will find a hard bottom in these holes, which can be dynamite when it comes to bass fishing. 
In 2019, we saw Buddy Gross win a FLW tournament targeting a big hole in a hydrilla bed on the south end of Lake Toho. We also saw Boyd Duckett win a Bassmaster Elite tournament on Lake Oneida back in 2012 by targeting a large hole in the grass that held both smallmouth and largemouth. The third high percentage grass area is a grass edge or a grass line. An edge to the grass, no matter where it's located, can be one of the most popular places to find bass. This could be an inside grass line during the spring or maybe an outside grass line during the summer. An edge is a perfect place for bass to ambush prey that is swimming by, and it also offers protection for both bass and other fish species from other predators. Although this is an extremely popular way to catch bass in grass, it is also one of the most consistent ways to catch bass. If you can find a hard grass line that ends and creates almost a wall of grass, it's going to be a great place to catch bass. In 2019, I placed fourth in a Bassmaster Open on Lake Chickamauga by targeting hydrilla grass lines during the post spawn. I used a big Texas rig worm to catch 52 pounds in three days and win $13,000. While grass lines and edges can be extremely productive, they can also extend for miles in some places around the country. So finding irregularities in grass lines is key to catching more bass. One of those irregularities include points in the grass. A point in a grass line may be one of the best areas to find bass no matter what lake you're on and no matter what season you are fishing. We all know other types of points hold bass year round and the same thing holds true for points that are made of grass. If you can find the right point, sometimes you can find megawads of schools of bass relating to that point. Another type of irregularity in a grass line is a pocket. A pocket or an inside turn in the grass act as natural funnels where bass can chase bait fish, pin them, and feed on them. This is an irregularity just like a point, and just like a point, you can find large schools of bass relating to pockets in the grass. It's extremely important to focus on these irregularities in the grass so that you can spend more time catching and not just fishing. The fourth high percentage grass area is anywhere different types of grasses mix. For instance, you may be fishing a milfoil flat and all of a sudden there are a couple of clumps of coontail mixed in with the milfoil. For whatever reason, bass are extremely attracted to areas like this. Sometimes you will find eelgrass beds that have clumps of hydrilla on them. Again, this mix of grass is a great place to locate bass. You hear it over and over again when professional fishermen find a mix of grass, they also seem to find a load of bass. The fifth high percentage grass area is basically structure features that are in the grass. Sometimes you fish lakes that are completely covered with grass. From the bank all the way out to the middle of the lake, it seems like there is grass everywhere. When this happens, the best thing to do is to actually look for some sort of structure element within the grass. You basically have to ignore the grass and just look for structure. Once you find the right type of structure, whether that is a point, a ledge, or a drop, the grass basically becomes the cover that the bass will be holding in on that piece of structure. For example, you could be fishing a large grass flat that has a small ditch that runs through it. The ditch does not have to be a huge drop, it can simply be a one or two foot drop and that is where you're going to find most of your bass on that flat. This happens a lot in natural lakes in the north and the south that have very limited structure features. Small dips and drops in the grass can be a key for locating giant schools of both largemouth and smallmouth bass. On the contrary, the sixth high percentage grass area is single clumps or isolated clumps. It seems as though the lakes that have a lot of grass, the best places to find bass are holes and drops in the grass. On lakes that don't have a lot of grass, you want to find single clumps or isolated clumps of grass. This is just something different for bass to relate to and it can attract big schools of bass in a very small area. 
These isolated grass clumps can be located anywhere and you can catch big bass on isolated pieces of cover. The seventh high percentage grass area is grass mats. Throughout the summer, as milfoil, coontail, and hydrilla grow, you will typically find areas where grass lays over on the surface and creates mats. These mats of vegetation create caves, holes, and tunnels in the grass that bass love to hide in. To get to these bass, you typically have to use a heavy weight, upwards of an ounce and a half, to punch through the grass and get to where the bass are hiding. This can be a difficult technique to learn, but it is one of the best ways to catch big bass. Not only do these grasses naturally mat over at times, but lakes that have high boat traffic will create cut grass mats. This is basically grass that has been cut off by boat propellers and has floated to the shoreline where it collects in certain slack water areas. These places where these mats form can change from year to year, but they always seem to hold bass. Now that you know the different types of grass and also seven high percentage areas to find bass in the grass, another huge factor you want to consider is how the bass are actually relating to the grass itself. There are three main ways that the bass will relate to grass. They relate to the top of the grass, the bottom, and the middle. And they can also relate differently to grass from day to day as well as hour to hour. Last year, I was fishing a Bassmaster Open on Lake Toho, and I was targeting bass relating to hard hydrilla grass lines in about 10 feet of water. The hydrilla was about 8 feet tall, and I was catching most of my bass by dragging the worm along the outside edge of grass. However, on the second morning of the tournament, I realized that the bass were actually holding and relating to the very top of the grass, where they were chasing small minnows and other bait fish. Although I realized this late, I was able to capitalize and catch a few bass by actually dragging a worm on the top of the grass to catch those bass. Later in the day, the bass moved to the bottom where they could be caught better on the worm by dragging it across the bottom. This made me realize that I had been wasting my time in the mornings because I was fishing the worm below where the majority of the bass were. In most cases, some of the best lures to use when targeting bass that are relating to the top of grass are topwaters and chatterbaits. Another place that you will find bass relating to grass is on the bottom. I would say that about 50% of the time I am fishing grass, I find bass relating to the bottom. Most of the time you are able to use Texas rigs and jigs flipped in and around the grass in order to catch these bass. You simply let your lure sink to the bottom, hop it a few times, and continue to move on. The third water column you will find bass relating is the middle of the grass. I'm not sure why bass do this, but from time to time you will actually have bass that suspend in the grass. This seems to happen a lot on smallmouth fisheries. For example, you may be fishing a grass line that is 10 feet deep and the bass are actually sitting 5 feet off the bottom. A lot of times you will be fishing a Texas rig around the grass and you will start to notice the bass are hitting the lure before it even gets to the bottom. That is a good indication that the bass are suspended and if you change your tactics you may be able to catch more and bigger bass in that same area. One of the best ways to catch suspended bass in the grass is with jerk baits, square bills, and light Texas rigs. If the bass are inside the grass, then Texas rigs may be your best option. But if the bass are relating to the edge of the grass and sitting just outside the grass, which they often do, you can throw a jerk bait or a square bill down the edge of the grass in order to catch them. So now we have come down to the last part of the video, which is all about eelgrass. The reason I left out eelgrass is because it grows very differently than the other types of grasses. It also looks very differently. Eelgrass has thin ribbon or tape shaped leaves that typically grow about three to four feet in length. The grass will grow in very dense clusters or islands of colonies along the bottom. Eelgrass, unlike other plant species, will grow in water that has some sort of flow or current. This is part of the reason why bass love eelgrass. They can use eelgrass to stage behind and wait for the food to come to them. 
Eelgrass can get so thick that bass typically aren't found inside the grass itself, but they will relate to the grass and stage just above it or just to the side of it. Eelgrass has really started to take over a lot of different lakes, including the Tennessee River lakes like Lake Gunnersville, that used to be known for its hydrilla and milfoil. Now a lot of bass relate to the eelgrass instead. Although eelgrass doesn't typically form mats itself, like other grass species, it often gets cut up by boat propellers where it collects around shorelines creating thick mats that can be punched with heavy weights to catch big bass. However, we will talk a little bit more about mat fishing as well as emergent grass fishing like lily pads, reeds, and water willow in part two of this video, which will be coming soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, please leave a comment, and please subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.